Good afternoon. I'm Tom Butcher of The Zero Project, and I'm honoured to be here today with Monica Ackerman of Scotiabank, on my immediate left, and Bianca Prince of Ing, I-N-G actually, not Ing, um, Bank, um, on my far left. Both of them are heads of accessibility within their organisations, and they're going to be t telling us what incredible things that they've done in their banks. But first, they're going to tell us a tiny bit about their banks so that we understand where they're coming from and then the challenges that they're facing and how they've addressed them. So, Monica, can I just hang, hand over to you for a few minutes on sure. Scotiabank? Sure. Um, I uh, work with Scotiabank. We're a very global bank. Uh, we have a primary presence in Canada, but also a very strong presence in Latin America. Um, we provide uh, consumer banking and uh, corporate banking and, and investment type businesses. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. I'm Bianca. Bianca. Um, I'm from ING Bank. Indeed. We're based in Amsterdam and we offer retail banking, wholesale banking services throughout the world. Um, we're mostly active in Europe, Turkey, Australia for the retail part and of course wholesale banking everywhere. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I've just been to a um, session and chaired a session on um, easy language and simple language. So you've got both the immediate accessibility to learning about both banks straight away. The subject of our discussion this afternoon, sadly we've got no fireside, but um, we've got a you know, flagstone discussion instead, is financial independence. What can banks improve? And I'm going to start off with um, the question, which is really where you start everything, which are, what are the actual challenges of including the disability community in banking? And I'll start this question with Monica, and the next question will, will, will start with Bianca. So, Monica, over to you. Um, I, I, I see that, uh, that the challenge really is about providing end-to-end -end inclusive experiences for all of our customers, regardless of ability or situation. And in that, uh, there are a number of mechanisms in which we communicate with our customers and our customers communicate with us. Uh, I do think that that is a very important touch point for accessibility is in banking, we call it omni-channel. And so there are many different ways in which you can work with the bank, either in a self-service way, in digital, uh, through our telephone banking, or in person. And uh, in each one of those uh, ways of communicating, it's really important to consider the needs of persons with disabilities. Right. Thank you so much. Bianca. Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges, and that's also based on ING's banking platform, we are really aiming on digital banking. And digital needs to be accessible for all. That's the first challenge we have. Mm. Especially during COVID, when a lot of branches closed, especially for us, for example, in the Netherlands, where we almost all branches closed, it means that people don't have the backup option to go into the branch. So you need to find a solution in there. And I think one of the key things is access digital accessibility, but secondly, also to find a solution to have a direct form of communication with your customers. This can be via contact center or whatever. And that's one of the things we are looking in when we are working on our European Accessibility Act compliance program. Wonderful, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to... Um, go through three sets of questions, uh, two more, and then we're going to, if I may, revisit what we've talked about, mm -hmm. and then with expanding on it. Um, so, end-to-end, -end digital, contact centers, the importance of communication. What um, do you both already do? Bianca. We're currently really on the part of assessing where do we stand and where what do we need to improve. So one of the key things we did for our launching our European Accessibility Act compliance program is actually assessing what is the current state of digital accessibility. This was a first assessment. We actually need to do more. So now I'm currently working to see if we can work with uh, an assessment tool provided by Business Disability Forum to assess what kind of maturity level our countries have 
in combination with what Kai, what is the status of their websites. And I know that in the first check, we don't always come out best, actually not. So we have to be realistic about it. And I think that's one of the key things. Be realistic about the state of digital accessibility of your services. Oh, no, 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 please continue. I wasn't stopping you. <laughs> and, no, it's fine. Um, and secondly, and I think that's one of the things um, where we really need to look into, and we're not doing that yet, but we should, and that's measuring what kind of issues people have when they try to connect to the bank. Because if we don't measure that, it's really hard to provide the best support. Great. Thank you very much indeed. And... Over to you, Monica. I'm really excited about what we're doing yep. in accessibility at Scotiabank. Um, I would say that there are areas where we are quite mature in understanding and communicating with our customers with disabilities, and areas where there is an amazing opportunity to, uh, to grow and to learn more. From a digital accessibility perspective, uh, at our Scotia Digital Operations, we've been embedding accessibility into all of our software product for, for um, five years now. Right. So accessibility is built into the foundation of our design systems, our designers, developers, product and engineering people um, have access to training. Actually, everyone that joins Scotia Digital gets uh, onboarded with some accessibility right. training. Yep. Uh, we have a really robust learning program where we um, meet people where they are in their roles. Yep. So to help them understand how can they impact on accessibility in their own um, skill set and their domain of control? Um, we've also, uh, in the last two years, built out an accessibility center of excellence mm -hmm. where we're taking a, a holistic and very strategic approach to accessibility across the organization. Um, and in that, it's working with our business partners, uh, our partners in, in groups around the bank to um, uh, understand what it is that they can do to impact on accessibility and how do we do that across an organization so that our customers and our employees have a consistent experience throughout. Great. Thank you very much indeed. And you're, you um, touched on one point, which I'm going to come back to later. Now I'm going to come back to, I, I know, don't think it's terribly boring, but I think it's really important, especially um, for poor Bianca. Um, not you personally, but for your, organiza <laughs> your organization. Uh, regulation, yes. intensified regulation, in particular in Europe and what's coming up. Um, it looms on the horizon or is it opportunity? To me it's opportunity and I think based on it, and actually that comes back to what we already do, is European Accessibility Act Breached some area, breached some areas for us. So, for example, uh, when we were first thinking about renewable of our cards, mm -hmm. there was a discussion: how can you make your bank cards accessible? And actually, that's one of the things we found. We started with a card with a notch in the Netherlands, and also recently in Belgium, and actually not in a very rare time because we launched this card during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things where you see, okay, there is regulation that starts uh, the conversation. So it's a good thing. And I think it's an opportunity. Um, regulation was also the reason why we finally got to the part where our strategy approach was, was moving forward. Because I have been working as Global Head of Accessibility for almost six years now at the bank. Mm. Um, and really focusing on awareness and trying to get the strategy moving. And I had an idea, and I had plans, and I've been pitching them throughout the bank for years. But it was the EAA that gave the final push. So we right. have three pillars. Yep. One is the EAA compliance program. Yep. Second is the organization. And third is employee. The EAA program, it's starting. And we're defining, uh, we are sharing the accessible products we have. For example, in the Netherlands, we have a gripper, which is easy to get your card out of the ADM. We've got the accessible card. Um, in Australia, we have phone banking. So we have all kinds of good things going on. It's important to share these and to help the countries that fall under the EIA to support this. So that's one. Secondly, I'm working 
Monica already has it on the <laughs> center of expertise, which yeah. is part of the organization, yeah. meaning policies, meaning training. And we are at the start of that. But the EIA is the accelerator to get that going. And finally, employee. There's a lot of effort and discussing on hiring. And one of the biggest things, and that's for all businesses, hiring people with disabilities is one, but often failing because businesses cannot provide the right accommodations to flourish. Or yeah. people just don't, and I'm sorry to say, fit into organizations. Yeah. But we have to be honest and clear and say, in some cases, you might not fit in an organization. If you work in a large corporate, you have to have a sense of independence. You can depend on your manager a bit. You can yes. depend on a colleague a bit. But people move around in that organization, so you have to be able to build and maintain your own network. That's one of the key things. That's on the person. But what we can do is provide the right accommodations in the workplace, provide the employee network where they can connect and find that support. Mm -hmm. So those things we can do, and there we can take responsibility, but it's a shared responsibility. And that's why I'm really uh, fond of the biopsychosocial model of disability, because yep. it's not about the respons just about the responsibility of ING to make our platforms accessible mm -hmm. or our branches accessible, but it's also about the responsibility of the person with the disability self. Like, it's my responsibility to go out there and find a job. It's yeah. my responsibility to increase awareness because I am able to do this for others. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and I understand about not fitting in in organizations. Uh, I started life as a banker. Oh, I am no longer a banker. <laughs> um, but that was many years ago. That's the kind of 90, no, mm. no, it's not. Wow, awful. That's the 70s and 80s, so it is a very long time ago. I so never assumed to be a banker, so and I ended up at a bank, so there's <laughs> all kinds of possibilities. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> so, Monica, tell us a wee bit about, I don't know, we've got the ADA in the mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you have in Canada, except I know you have quite interesting difference in regulations across the different provinces and yes. the different states. So can, can you fit everything into your picture so that we can understand. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, Canada actually has quite strong uh, disability discrimination and employment equity legislation, yeah. uh, which supports uh, the uh, employment of persons with disabilities. Right. And uh, building on that in uh, our provincial regulations, there are accessibility standards that are implemented across the various provinces. Not all provinces have them yet. Mm. However, we are uh, headquartered in Ontario where there's the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. Yep. And the approach that they've taken is uh, accessibility across a number of different standards. Yes. And those standards are developed in conjunction with persons with disabilities and with the workplace. And those have been... Um, um, in place, uh, uh, staggered implementation since about 2004. Right. And, um, and that's provided us a, with a, a framework and a foundation for how we approach accessibilities as regulation is kind of the baseline. Yeah. And uh, in the, the last couple of years, uh, Canada now has the Accessible Canada Act. And what is unique about that is that it applies to all federally regulated organizations, mm -hmm. which banking is. Yeah. And they are also taking a standards-based approach mm -hmm. to um, accessibility across seven priority areas. Yeah. And um, they are very cognizant of the fact that you know companies operate across provincial jurisdictions and across yeah. um, uh, international jurisdictions and there is a big effort there to harmonize standards yep. so that from the center in our accessibility COE we're able to identify what are those consistent practices yep. that are going to enable us to meet our customers needs to our employees needs how are we interpreting those regulations and then being able to scale them out across yep. the entire organization. Great, thank you very much indeed. Just having a look at the time, we've got plenty of time. Excellent, it's just I'm facing you rather than facing the, the, the clock. So now, I've got some questions. And um, I've 
these are things I hasten to add, listeners, that I'm interested in. But I think you might be interested in them as well. So um, one of the things that you mentioned right at the start, um, Monica, was that you provide end-to-end. Um, and I'm absolutely sure, Bianca, you provide end-to-end -end because you couldn't exist otherwise mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be sitting there. Um, so how do you, and I'm going to start, Monica, with you, how do you ensure consistency um, across the different areas in which you operate as a bank, mm -hmm. um, but I, you, I'm going to come later to geographical areas, but insofar as one of the most important things about banking, having been a banker, is, I hate the word upsell, but what you really want to do is, if you have someone who's got a, a, a current account, you might want them to have a savings account. Mm -hmm. If you have a savings account, um, you might want them eventually to get a mortgage. If you've got a mortgage, then maybe you want to help them with their trust work. How do you ensure that you are consistent so that the quality of the accessibility and the services that you're offering mm -hmm. to persons with disabilities in one area matches, I won't say excels, but matches the services and accessibility in other areas? Oh, that's a, that's a great question, and it is, uh, is quite a unique challenge yeah. uh, in a large organization. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I will start with sort of the digital, the digital and self-service yeah. space. You know, when, when it comes to the website where you take a look at your products, mm. um, where you can make those decisions, we ensure that that website meets all web accessibility standards yeah. and that it is tested with people with disabilities. So you get onto the website, you get an idea of yeah. what those products are, and then the first step is like, okay, now how do I apply? Mm. Those are different applications, again, where you're onboarding and you need to be able to ensure that you can follow each of the steps that we tell you in advance what the steps are yeah. um, and that those applications are fully accessible, whether you use a screen reader yep. uh, with vision loss or, um, or whether you have a cognitive disability and uh, we want to be sure that the steps are clear in plain language and understandable. Um, we have included very robust help um, we have some uh, help articles in sign language as yes. well. Um, and then, then it comes to once you get into your application, you've got your product. Yeah. And again, ensuring that that mobile application, if that, if that is your choice, yeah. is fully accessible or if you're banking online. Um, when it comes to the customer experience, so let's say you're going to the branch, I think a big part of that is the awareness. Yeah. And um, uh, being able to uh, communicate not only with our employees about the accessibility services that the bank offers, yeah. but also letting our customers know you can ask for these things. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. Bianca. <laughs> yeah, the interesting part is actually, and, and maybe that is uh, uh, more even more important than just the end to end because what we noticed we recently had a report by the authorities of financial markets in the Netherlands and a lot of people experience trouble accessing banking products mm. understanding banking products mm -hmm. but also making the critical decision is this the product for me and yeah. if i look at upselling i really also think we should more investigate more and research more how do we make sure that people with disabilities can access these products because there is a lot of reasons why a person with a disability cannot get a mortgage for example mm. because in a lot of i think in every country i haven't found a country where it's not if you are on welfare you cannot get a mortgage your your income is not included in a mortgage yeah. request well, at the same time, if you have a disability, that doesn't go away. So, in equally, if you look at income, would it be worthly to have the debate that if you're in welfare, it's equal weight as you would be employed by an employer? Mm. Because your employer can run into bankruptcy and you lose your job mm. or whatever reason why your job stops. So, there are many impacts there. I think that's one of the key things. And it's related to 
the critical thinking of the customer, making that critical decision, but also the responsibility for us as banks to think about how can we assure that everybody is included in our financial products. And I think that's something we are at the start of. Um, and I really hope to get the discussion started in the future coming years. When, to, when do we find that we provide equal access to financial services because I think that's one of the key things. Yes, end-to-end -end is important, but if you want to think about end-to-end -end and upselling, ups yeah. then we have to make sure that the products we want to sell mm. are accessible because currently, in many cases, people mm. fall out. Yeah, excellent, thank you. And I know you wanted to can come just, in with a comment. Yeah, can I just build on that? Is yeah, that, um, absolutely. Uh, you know, advice, financial advice is extremely important. Everybody mm. looks for it yeah. at certain points in their life. And I think one of the areas that we don't understand well enough is the uh, the impact of disability on finances. Yeah. And the, it's expensive to have a disability, when, whether it's uh, uh, getting a wheelchair or having additional assistance in your home. And how can we as banks better provide advice for those disability-related life moments mm. and uh, understand what are the right products for, the, for, mm. for people, what is the right advice, yeah. where can somebody go and talk to uh, an advisor that understands disability right. and how it may progress and change throughout your lifetime. Yeah. Well, um, we always, I totally agree with you, we always work on the basis here that um, you're, you're always going to be able, no, Dis disabled twice in your life, mm. when you're born, mm -hmm. and um, probably just before you die. Right. Um, and you know, the older you get, um, probably the less able you become. Um, and so, that is this is your life change that yes. you're going to be dealing with. And so, I agree. I'm, I'm going to ask a, a, a very um, simple question now, um, which is brought up by. Don't worry, it is by both of you. So. Documentation. You go and get a loan. Mm. 20 pages long. Yes. Do you understand it? Do I understand it? No. Mortgages. Yeah. I, I want to buy a house, but the mortgage document is, 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 is too difficult. Um, do you both have similar approaches? And I'm, I'm going to, because I'm going to ask each one which it is. Um, when it comes to mortgages, do you have easy language mortgages, or do you have um, con mortgages which are really standard, but you have someone who comes in and explains the mortgage to someone in easy language? How, how do you address a problem like that, Monica? Uh, I'd say that uh, that we're early early stages yeah. of that work. Um, uh, there is, there is a gr there are a group of people who are very very involved in taking a look at plain language. Mm -hmm. What does plain language mean? How do you interpret that? And how do you balance that with uh, sort of legal requirements and yeah. terms and conditions? Um, uh, under uh, we have another regulation in Canada called the Seniors Code and also the Consumer Protection right. um, uh, Programs, and they they all align along with accessibility to figure out how can we communicate more clearly and plainly with mm. cus uh, with our customers around complex yeah. financial products like that. And uh, well, again, coming back to the Accessible Canada Act, mm. one of the first standards that they plan on releasing is a plain language standard. So uh, I think that that's going to be really helpful yeah. for us to figure out how do, how do we communicate this more clearly. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, I know it is pretty, pretty complicated. We, yeah. we had an organization here uh, a couple of years ago who were working on producing easy language mortgage yeah. documents. Uh, I think they're probably still working on it. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. Uh, no, that's a facetious comment. I'm sure that they've made a great inroads. Um, Bianca, how do, how do you deal with it at ING? Actually, currently, and that's one of the things we found, the report found, is it's not, it's not clear for people. And especially, there's no specific, dedicated, easy language mortgage mm. explanation. Um, what we do have in the, Net in the Netherlands, for example, often people go to an advisor, and that advisor is also obligated to explain what the mortgage means. Yes. That is technically how it works. But to be honest, 
when I had to reset my last mortgage, I had a lot of questions. And yeah. But it's also about asking the questions. So I think actually, and that's not something we actually already do, but I think we should work on this, is get people with and without disabilities better education on how to ask questions to understand the yep. financial products and maybe that's something we can include in accessibility um, as this is this is typically a topic where Monica and uh, myself earlier uh, uh, talked about mm. is you have accessibility and access to and yes. those are two different things yeah. but yeah. you can work with it on the same solution. Yeah. So customer protection policy yeah. is about making sure people understand your information. Yeah. You can do that by easy language. And easy language is a typical accessibility solution. Yes. That's one thing you can do. Secondly, if it's about using difficult financial language, how about adding a button behind it and giving a short explanation what it is? Yeah. Especially in digital documents, those options are there. And I think we all, as banks, should use those options more. That will start. And I think that is the start of it. And I would love to be connected to the people on the easy language mortgages. because. <laughs> oh, well, I shall look them up. So I've had the gentleman show me that it's five five minutes. Did you want to add something quickly to that? And then I'm going to ask you to access, do a sum up. Access yeah. is also includes being able to uh, access the information in a way that suits yourself. So yes. it, whether it's an accessible PDF, yeah. whether it's a document that is in Braille or large print, yeah. or when you're communicating with an advisor, the ability to uh, communicate in your first language if it is sign language. So that's the other piece about being uh, um, included in complex financial conversations. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Now I'm going to embarrass you both. Okay. Um, we have probably about three minutes only. Mm -hmm. I am going to ask you individually, what is the one thing that you are most proud of having achieved in your current position? Oh, I'm and, and you have one minute starting from now. <laughs> I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that we have built a strong, very strong digital accessibility program yeah. and that we have been able to translate that success into an all-bank program yeah. where we can very holistically take a look at what our customers' needs are and, yeah. by the way, meet all the regulations. Wonderful, wonderful. Bianca, you. I'm actually very proud of... All the work I've done in the six years, leading to resulting to get the bank, ING, moving towards accessibility and commitment to accessibility, because yeah. that's the big thing. When I started six years ago, somebody told me, I don't think you're going to make this happen. And I did. And that's what I'm proud of. Great. Well, I'm just going to sum it up to say that you, you are two formidable ladies. <laughs> you must be very formidable because the only way you can make it work is by getting buy-in from the top mm -hmm. as you've just said and unless you get buy-in from the top who then go down to the middle management who you have to spend your time prodding you're not going to get anywhere and so obviously you've both done exactly that and so I it behooves me just to say congratulations and it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you i'm only sorry that we haven't got about an hour <laughs> in which to talk because there are loads of other questions that i'd written down and i just um thank you very much indeed for your time monica and thank you. bianca thank, thank you, you too. so much thank you for the invitation no well and it's great to have you here at the zero project mm -hmm. conference and enjoy the rest of your time all right, we should and there you have it, everybody, from two really excellent banks and the heads of accessibility in both of them. So really from the people who matter and the people who know. I hope you enjoyed it and tune in to our next fireside. I'm looking for the fire. Mm -hmm. Fireside chat, which is going to be in a few minutes. Many thanks, ladies. Many thanks. Thank you.